Hello everyone, I'm Bart Barker with Wilson County Schools. And as we start the day of reflection on looking back on the one year anniversary of the devastating tornadoes from last March, we wanna tell you the story of a very special teacher. Now I've heard many stories from staff members and teachers from that horrible night, but this one is really something else, all things considered. And to hear her tell it is truly extraordinary. Take a look. So when you look at this, this is the tornado that passed very near your home, and it is the tornado that is, it's past West Wilson, and it's a direct hit at Stoner Creek at this point. Mm -hmm. We see the power of that twister as it's going through. A lot of people ask, you know, from a family standpoint, what did that sound like going through your neighborhood? Um, it, it still gives me chills just watching the video, actually. Um, that is... I can I can hear it even though I can't I can I can hear it you know thinking back um, it was a you know eerie silence before and then the train sound that everyone speaks mm -hmm. about it it did sound like that and then it was almost a deafening of it was so loud that it, it almost made you kind of feel like you couldn't hear for a moment meet Wes Wilson science teacher Megan Maxwell in the very early morning hours of March 3rd, everything changed in an instant. Actually, when I go back to that night, I think about it was so dark after the tornado, you could only see the emergency vehicle lights. After the roars of the EF3 twister had passed, her family's home near North Mount Juliet Road was destroyed. And in the live electrical wire rubble, her son needed to be rescued by Mount Juliet Fire Chief, Jamie Luffman. Hey, big man, you Good did it. Job. You were rescued. Their experience was shared with the world in an interview with Good Morning America. Pretty crazy, huh? <laughs> you ready to go work with them now? Okay. Right, get in on your side. You go work. Yeah, but that's just the start. Megan's classroom across the street at West Wilson took a direct hit. Her son attends Stoner Creek. It was in shambles too. And so was her outlook when the morning light shined and showed the unspeakable aftermath. From a parent standpoint, from a teacher standpoint, where was your mind in all of this? Uh, my, my son actually attends Stoner Creek Elementary. So I was I was definitely seeing that from parent, teacher, and personal property. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a- A, a three-headed monster. It was a three-headed monster. It was the, the trifecta that you never want to happen. But then the Mount Juliet community showed up. Complete strangers were offering helping hands. Many businesses put their operations on hold. A showing of solidarity ensued from every angle. For Megan, it meant everything. Their response and their care for us was, it was everything. Um, I am not from Mount Juliet, so they kind of took everyone in as, as family. Um, we mm -hmm. had meals delivered to us. We had, you know, people reaching out even months after the tornado. Like I said, it, it wasn't just the day after responses. Mm -hmm. This is months later, you know, people just checking up on you. We had churches who reached out to us. They would bring us things. Displaced from home, she and her family checked into a hotel as the cleanup continued. But it wasn't what you'd call a vacation. Um, right after we, we started living at the hotel, um, of course, the pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, literally within days, you know, of the tornado, we pretty much were on lockdown. Mm -hmm. So we were on lockdown at a hotel. Um, so Your a story lot of, gets deeper and deeper. It does. It does. <laughs> um, a lot of people were hunkering down at home. We were hunkering down at, at a hotel. Mm -hmm. um, so Please it, tell me they had at least a continental breakfast for They you. did have okay. a continental right. breakfast. Um, <laughs> however, they my son was very excited about the pool. Yes. Um, well, of course, they had to close the pool down. <laughs> So <laughs> everywhere you're turning, doors are closing. Right? Yes, it so. was. Um, it, that was yet another thing that we had to we mm. had to overcome. So, but we did. We got through it. Oh yes, the pandemic that came soon after the tornado. About the same time that she found out that Mount Juliet High School would be Wes Wilson's seventh and eighth grade temporary home, a place of welcome refuge, of course, but also a place where remote learning was unthinkable just one year ago. With her family free from injury following the storm, that's what she's most thankful for. But coming in at a close second is the Mount Juliet community that she's proud to call home, even though she's a Cookville gal. Her gratitude is extended to many 
as her family continues to rebuild. There were groups who came with churches. There were groups from businesses. Once again, with West Wilson Middle, we had, you know, our staff was out there. So they were parking anywhere they possibly could in Mount Juliet and walking as far as they needed to to get to that area. So it was, it was overwhelming, but in, the, in a great way. We can all learn so much from others, but perhaps Megan's story of perseverance under the worst circumstances is proof once again that whatever any of us are facing, it will get better. And there is always hope. For Megan, that hope came in the form of her community. When I look at some pictures, I see strangers all, all over. The, the, our, our yard, all over our neighbor's yards, and everyone is just, you know, you look back and you think, oh my gosh, I had, you know, 50 people who I didn't even know, and they were cutting down these limbs, they were moving things off of vehicles. It was, it was incredible to see. I'm Bart Barker for Wilson County Schools.